All right, finally back in HSR once again. And what's better time than now? The version live stream was insane. After a long wait, we are finally arriving on Panacone. And we all know, a new region calls for some new characters. And this time, we're gonna be looking at Black Swan our newest addition to the roster of the most attractive characters in Honkai Star Rail. Well, I already made a ton of videos about her, but in this video, we're gonna go all the way. We're gonna be talking about her overall kit, her eidolons, followed by some build recommendations, pros and cons, and finally, synergies. As usual, these are just my personal thoughts on these characters, based on my testing and experience with them, and you guys are free to have your own. I respect everyone's opinion. With that said, I'm Sho, and let's finally talk about Black Swan. Starting with an overview, so Black Swan is a 5-star wind character following the path of Nihility. She has great dot application and also increases the dot damage taken by the enemies in their own turn. And by that thought, you might be thinking, wait a sec, is she just a 5 star sample? Well, you're not that off the mark. She's kinda a 5 star sample, but that's not a bad thing. Well, we all know how good Sampo is. We all hate him, but we can't deny his value. Her base stats are actually pretty decent, with decent attack and speed and a 120 energy cost ultimate, which is still in my opinion in the higher end. Moving on to her traces, her basic attack is actually actually pretty good. It's a single target attack which deals wind damage to the enemy and has a chance to apply one stack of arcana, a special kind of wind dot which works similar to wind shear, both deals wind damage and can stack. It's like erode for shock. Both deal lightning damage but are considered different dots on the enemy. Also if the hit target already had wind shear, bleed, burn or shock applied to them, then each dot respectively also has a chance to apply an extra stack of arcana to that enemy. Just from this basic attack, you can clearly expect her to be an excellent dot applicator. Her skill is a multi-target attack dealing equal amount of wind damage to both the main and the adjacent targets with a 100% chance to apply a stack of arcana and also has a 100% chance to decrease defense of those three targets for three turns. Now this is where I think Black Swan becomes a lot more than just a 5 star sample. Her ultimate is an AoE attack that deals wind damage to all enemies and applies epiphany for two turns. Enemies affected with epiphany takes more damage in their own turn. That means the damage from dots and in this state when the enemies take damage from arcana stacks, their stacks won't reset to 1 after dealing damage. This not reset part can only happen once per ultimate. This will allow her to massively stack up her arcana dot and deal massive damage in the enemy's turns. Her ultimate has a 120 energy cost. Now for her talent, it's a freaking wall of text. But in summary, each time an enemy takes dot damage at the start of their turn, there's a chance for it to be inflicted with arcana, which is just as I said, a type of wind dot that deals wind damage at the start of the enemy's turn and can stack up to 50 times, which is crazy. And each stack increases the damage multiplier of Arcana by 12%. So let's say you reach 50 stacks of Arcana, then that dot will have its damage multiplier increased by over 500%. And that's not all, there are other effects that apply to Arcana depending on the amount of stacks. When the enemy has 3 or more stacks of Arcana, then that dot will deal a bit of wind damage to the adjacent targets as well. And if the enemy has 7 or more stacks of Arcana on them, then that dot will ignore 20% of the targets and the adjacent targets defense. This whole Whole talent is just bonkers to me. Dot teams are already great in AoE situations, but Black Swan will take that to even greater heights. Lastly, her technique is freaking hilarious, man. Like, look at this thing. When she uses her technique, there's a 150% base chance for each of the enemies to be inflicted with one stack of Arcana. And if the Arcana successfully lands on the enemy, there is again a chance for that enemy to be inflicted with another stack of Arcana. And this continues until Arcana falls to land on the target. The only thing is that each time Arcana lands, the chance of it landing next time is half. So it's like it starts with 150%, next time it's 75%, then 37.5% and so on. It's like an ultimate RNG fest. It'll be super fun to see how much we can apply. Now in terms of leveling her traces, I would say max out her talent first. Her dot multipliers and the extra effects are all in her talent. So that takes first priority. Then I'd say her ultimate and her skill have similar value. Both increases her dot damage. And lastly her basic attack. I would say to just leave it at level 1, but the annoying thing here is that her chance to inflict dots is all also depends on the level. So at the end, she is a character that really wants to be maxed out for the best performance. And personally, I think you guys will be maxing her out anyways. Now for her ascension passives. Her first ascension passive makes it so that after using the skill to hit an enemy that already has dot like wind shear, bleed, burn or shock, each of these dots
Arcanos respectively has a chance to inflict one extra stack of Arcana, which just increases her dot application even more. Her second ascension passive gives even her allies to inflict Arcana stacks. Every time an enemy target receives dot during a single attack by an ally, there's a chance for the target to be inflicted with one stack of Arcana, which can even stack up to three times during one single attack. This can even pair with her basic attack to give even more stacks of Arcana. Lastly, her third ascension passive increases her damage by an amount equal to 60% of the effect hit rate, up to a maximum damage increase of 72%, which to max out, you need to build 120% effect hit rate on your Black Swan. This is really nice, cause it gives her a solid benefit of building effect hit rate on her, cause she definitely needs it, as her base chance to apply dots are pretty low at 65% most of the time, so she needs to build a lot of effect hit rate on her, but with this, you get rewarded for doing so. As for her stat bonuses, after maxing out her traces, she gets 28% attack, 14.4% wind damage boost, and 10% effect hit rate. Overall, she has some great passives, like one is targeting her skill, and one her basics, and the one giving her buffs. It's really nice, the only complaint I have with this is that there is no passive regarding energy regeneration. And at this point, this kinda became a necessity. I know her energy cost is only 120, but still, even Kafka has 120 energy cost ultimate, yet she does have a passive targeting her energy. But well, that's what we get I guess. On to Black Swan's Eidolons. Her E1 is solid. While Black Swan is active in the battle, all enemies with Wind Shear, Bleed, Burn or Shock will have their corresponding elemental resistance respectively reduced by 25%, like Wind Resistance for Wind Shear or Fire Resistance for Burn etc. It's a great buff just from existing, making DOT teams deal even more damage. It's so good in fact, it's like a 15-20% to overall damage increase for any DOT team. His E2 immediately inflicts 6 stacks of Arcana on the adjacent targets when an enemy inflicted with Arcana is defeated, which is nice and all, but doesn't really matter that much much, as a dot application is already pretty insane, her E3 and E5 increase the level of her traces, which also doesn't really matter that much as most of her damage comes from dots. A few levels on her talent does increases her damage, but the difference is so small that you won't notice it at all. Her E4 is the thing that I was talking about earlier, some extra energy. While in the Epiphany state, enemy target's effect res is reduced by 10%, and at the start of their turn, when they get defeated, Black Swan regenerates 8 energy, which is super good and really helps her with rotations. But again, this energy regeneration effect only triggers up to one time per ultimate, which is not something I would expect from an E4. Lastly, her E6 gives a massive damage increase. When Black Swan's allies target an enemy, she has a 65% chance to inflict one stack of Arcana on that target. And each time she successfully inflicts Arcana on them, there's a 50% chance to additionally increase the stack by one turn. It's similar to her technique, but on her allies' attack. This just makes any team with Black Swan, may it be a dot team or not, able to provide huge dot application. It's like around 15% overall team damage increase which is big. Overall, only her E1 or her E6 is what I would consider worth it. Well, E6 is never worth it in my opinion, unless you are a whale, but yeah, her E1 is the best overall in my opinion. It affects her entire team and does not have any conditions attached to it. Now let's move on to builds. Starting off with relics, now there is really only one set that can be used on her, and that's the dot set. There is literally no other option. Like sure you can use a 2 piece combo of the win and the attack set, or a double attack set or whatever, but the dot set is just far ahead of everything else. The defense shred it provides with the differentiate from Black Swan's skill just increases the overall damage by a ton. So I would highly recommend you farm for this set. In terms of ornaments, well we have the usual attack set like the Glamoth or the Space Ceiling Station set which are good but since she needs so much effect hit rate that the Pan Cosmic set actually comes out to be a really good set on her. It has similar effect on her passive and it gives attack based on her effect hit rate. If you are utilizing the effect hit rate that this set is providing then this will actually be her best in slot. But the difference between this and the Glamoth set is literally negligible. And if you are not utilizing the extra effect hit rate and you already have enough without the set then then the Glamoth set is generally better, so just pick whichever you have better pieces of. That said, how much effect hit rate you need on her? Well, taking into her low chance of applying dots and her passive, you want to aim for around 120% effect hit rate on your Black Swan, both to make sure to always land those Arcana dots and to maximize her ascension passive. So in terms of Relic's main stats, you preferably want to go for an effect hit rate body to get close to that 120% cap. Now this does get converted into damage bonus, so you are just giving her damage percent. For her boots, you can go either speed or attack. I personally prefer speed, but if you already have enough speed substats, then you can go with an attack boots. Just don't build her with zero speed. 
For the sphere, again you can either go with attack or win damage. Both are fine. But if you are using Ruan Mei with her, then you are already getting so much damage boost from Ruan Mei and her ascension passive that an attack percentage spear becomes just as good. Finally for the rope, attack percentage. Don't build her with ERR or something. Yeah, she needs some energy, but building into her will just affect her damage. For substats on the pieces, you want to prioritize the effect hit rate, attack and speed in that order. For her light cones, well there are only two 5 stars that I would recommend. First is of course her signature. This is just perfect for her. As expected, it gives effect hit rate and has a special kind of effect that increases her attack and can also ignore defense. It's just crazy. Like the defense ignored from here, with her skill and the dot relic set, she will have like over 60% defense down. It's literally an insane light cone for Black Swan. The other 5 stars is going to be the Horda Stroll light cone. It's a good budget option for her as it's free and is actually pretty good. It gives break effect and dot damage and also helps with energy but has a bit of an issue with its uptime which is why it's not that consistent but it's a decent option now i'm not recommending any of the other three light cones as well as light cone doesn't take dot into account as w's light cone is more so for her and not that good on others and kafka's light cone is good but like if you have this light cone then you probably have kafka right just use it on kafka no need to take it away from her anyways for four star options well there are two light cones that literally takes the second best spot for her it's either good night sleep well or eyes of the prey both are really close in terms of damage, but I prefer Eyes of Prey as it also helps with her effect hit rate goals. And the effect hit rate gets converted into damage anyways, so it's like damage boost. Good night sleep well just straight up gives more damage. But you need to make sure that you have enough effect hit rate on her from just relics alone. Another 4 star option is Resolution Science Light Cone. It mostly used as a defense trader, but you need it at higher superimposition level to make sure that it lands consistently. Fermata can be an okay option as well, but if you are going to buy a light cone from the MOC store, then there is this new light light cone coming in the next patch, which is actually pretty good. It gives damage boost and if the character has over 80% effect hit rate, then this also gives attack. And we will be building black swan with a ton of effect hit rate anyways, which makes this a great option for her. So if you have the MOC currency saved up, I don't know what it's called, but if you have it and you don't have any other options I just mentioned, just buy this light cone and it will work greatly on her. Here's a simple damage chart showing overall value of the light cones I just mentioned. Of course her signature is at the top, but both eyes of the prey and good night sleep well are really close. The rest are also great, so just use what you have on your account. Now for her rotations, well it's a lot complicated than you think. Like for a perfect scenario, I would recommend you to go with the 4 skill ultimate rotation for the maximum amount of damage with just skills and you should get her ultimate every 4 turns for sure. But it's extremely SP heavy and you need someone to generate SP for the team. Especially if you are playing her with Kafka, who also wants to use her skill every turn. So for a more SP lenient way, I can recommend 2 options. If you are up against multiple targets like 3 or more targets, then go with the skill basic rotation where you switch between skill and basics and she becomes sp neutral and with some hits here and there and some kills she would be able to get a 4 turn ultimate as well but it's a bit rng at the worst case you get a 5 turn ultimate which is not that bad the other way is for a situation where you are facing two or less enemies like bosses then you can go with a skill basic basic rotation where she becomes sp positive and you get a 5 turn ultimate and since the skills defense down is last for 3 turns you don't have to worry about it running out overall these two rotations are what i would recommend of course if you are playing her with ruan mei and luocha then she can skill every turn because both ruan mei and luocha will be able to generate enough skill points with this she gets her ultimate every 4 turn and if you are playing her with someone like huo huo then you can do any of the two rotations I mentioned as Huo Huo will give 20% energy to Black Swan helping to get her ultimate faster. There are a lot of ways to play her depending on the situation. You just pick one based on your team. Now before we talk about synergies, let's look at some pros and cons of this character. Starting with pros, she's the best dot applicator in this game. Previously this spot was occupied by Sampo with his consistent dots but now Black Swan takes it to another level with her being able to apply Arcana through literally every part of her kit makes her an insane dot applicator. Next, her higher multipliers. Now previously with Sampo, his damage multipliers for wind shear were pretty low. Well it's expected cause wind shear can stack but black swan has crazy multipliers with the ability to stack her arcana. She also has buffs for herself and her entire team. She can increase dot damage taken by the enemies that really benefit her and she can also decrease defense of those enemies which will affect her entire team's damage. Lastly she has great single target and AoE potential. Her dots have special effects based on the number of stacks it has and the more you have the dot themselves get the ability to hit adjacent targets, which is great for multi-target situations. For her cons, well we have the same issue as any dot team. She is pretty niche. 
Well, her only role is a dot applicator in a dot team. She can be used as a general defense shredder, but that is hard copium. Also, her damage is extremely backloaded. She has no way of detonating any of her dots, so she needs to wait for her enemies to take turns. And because of this, she is pretty reliant on Kafka. Well, it's not like she is unplayable without Kafka, but it makes a huge difference. Kafka gives her damage some front load, which she really needs. Lastly, her energy generation. Well, it can be tackled through proper rotations, but not having any type of energy-based passive really hurts her potential, as her ultimate only lasts for two turns, resulting in a lot of downtime. Now for some potential synergies, for Black Swan, there's only two characters that have the most synergy with her, and that's going to be Kafka and Ron May. Kafka is of course for her Kafka things, as I just discussed in the pros and cons section, that Black Swan's damage is extremely backloaded, and it's not something unique to her, it's a general issue with any DOT team. And the only way to remedy that, at least for now, is Kafka. Her being able to detonate all dots with her skill and her burst is what makes this such a good pair. Kafka being the best dot enabler and Black Swan being the best dot applicator both complement each other's damage perfectly. Kafka with her constant detonation and Black Swan with her consistent dot and other buffs such as defense down, it's just insane how well these two characters work together. Now to make this even better is to add Ruan Mei to the mix. She gives an insane damage boost up to 68% and gives a weakness break efficiency to her entire team, which is perfect as both Black Swan and Kafka benefit from that. She also provides speed and break effect, which are great stats for any DOT team, and she provides this just by existing on the team. And the major part is that she gives resistant penetration buff to her entire team, which is an insane damage boost similar to defense down. Overall, a team with these three characters is just pure damage. Of course, it's okay if you don't have Ruan Mei. I think Black Swan needs Kafka more than she needs Ruan Mei. And you can use a triple dot team with Sam or Gwynaifen, and it's certainly great. But in terms of damage, Ruan Mei will still be better than any other dot character as the third slot. Some other characters are Ho Ho and Locha for the sustain slot. Ho Ho is the staple for any dot team with her energy and attack buff, both of which Black Swan really appreciates. As I said, she does need a bit of energy, at least in my opinion, and Ho Ho providing that to the whole team is what makes it perfect. Locha is great for the SP generation he provides, as both Kafka and Black Swan thus consumes a lot of skill points. Like Kafka wants to skill every time, and Black Swan is at best an SP neutral character. You can play her as SP positive, but that is only recommended in single target or boss fights. So Luocha can provide the skill points these two needs. And of course, if you are using Ruan Mei, then she can also generate skill points. Luocha also provides out of turn healing, which is great for tight situations. Overall, a team like this, with either Luocha or Ho Ho, is gonna be insane. Previously, I also made a video dedicated to Black Swan teams with proper calculations. So if you want to check that out, links will be in the description. Up till now, DOT teams were in a pretty good spot with their consistent damage and easier builds. But now with these three hot waifus, DOT is gonna rise into the meta as one of the best source of consistent brain dead teams to play in Honkai Star Rail. Well, these are just what I think of Black Swan and her teams. If you guys have any other ideas, do share them in the comments. Overall, Black Swan is a solid character and best in her niche. That is as a DOT applicator. She has her own strength and weaknesses and ways to counter those. She's one of those characters that will remain solid until we get a similar character of the same element that does the same thing but better. And if someone like that does comes around who is better at applying wind dots than Black Swan, then that character will probably break the game. Anyways, if you have Kafka or if you love the dot playstyle in general, then I highly recommend pulling for Black Swan. As of recording this video, the Kafka banner is still up, so you can test your luck if you want. With that, thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, drop a like and subscribe for more content like this from yours truly. This video is a bit long, but I put everything I know and think about this character, and I really hope you enjoyed it. Thanks again, and I'll see you guys in my next video.